Hi, I'm Jacob Hacker. I'm the director of the Institution for Social and Policy Studies at Yale. I'm Casey King. I'm the executive director of the Yale Center for Analytical Sciences. And the two of us are here to talk about an event that we're hosting uh, on November 29th. It's at 4 to 6 p.m. at Luce Hall. It's entitled The Volatility Economy, Wall Street, Main Street, and the Middle Class. Now, Casey and I actually thought up this conference when we were on a bike ride. Uh, we were talking together about some of the work that we've been doing. I've been doing a middle class economic insecurity and its links to what's happening on Wall Street. Casey's been doing work on volatility in Wall Street and whether or not some of the controls that the markets have adopted, like these circuit breakers that stop trading when there's big volatility, whether they could do anything to make the, the markets better. Well, in, anyway, since we started talking about it, the markets have gotten even more volatile than they were uh, when we were on that ride, and we've gotten a great panel together. We've got Joe Nacera, a Wall Street, uh, I'm sorry, Wall Street columnist for the New York Times. Uh, we have Frank Hathaway, who's the NASDAQ chief economist, and we have the legendary Bob Schiller, uh, the economics professor here, who predicted uh, the major crash of the bubble back in the early 2000s and predicted the housing market bubbles end uh, in late 2000. So he's going to be speaking about what we can, what we can do and, and what's happening right now in the market. I'm going to be talking a little bit about middle class economic insecurity and its links to what's happening on Wall Street. Um, one of the most interesting things that I've been finding in my work is that even as we've seen the overall economy uh, get less volatile in the 2000s, uh, in the last decade, we saw family incomes get much, much more unstable. Well, in the last few years, we've seen family incomes get more unstable, even more unstable, but the markets go out of control. So what are the links between family income instability and market instability? Uh, now that most Americans uh, do their retirement savings in the stock market, what does it mean that we see such volatile uh, markets today? And, and how is this tied up with the huge explosion of debt among families? Those are some of the issues I'll be talking about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, proves, um, it suggests a really interesting discussion. For me, a free market, when I think about free market, it, it's more than just an idea for Americans. It's really uh, fundamental to who we are as a people. But, but given the volatility in the markets in the past few years and the debacle of 2008 where millions of jobs were lost and millions of dollars, um, people are looking more and more to, gov to government to do something, uh, to, uh, to regulate uh, an industry that seems to be creening wildly and uh, somewhat irresponsibly out of control. Um, seems to be driven by this rage of accumulation without any notion of uh, public service. And um, given this imperative, um, one of the questions I'm most fascinated by is what, what exactly should government regulation look like? Can it be just? Uh, can it be effective? Can it mitigate market volatility and, and protect the lives of uh, and incomes and livelihoods of ordinary Americans? Um, and I think this is a, a fundamental question. How do you how do you reconcile a free market ideology with the current calls for market regulation? And you're going to be looking at the, the volatility that's taking place and whether or not some of the circuit breakers that, that kick in when, when markets get out of whack, whether they can actually help. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the first real uh, s substantial government interventions was putting in place these circuit breakers. After May 6, uh, 2010, when a trillion dollars was lost in a matter of minutes, um, there was a clamoring to do something, and what was done was uh, these circuit breakers were put in. Basically, if the market dropped more than 10% over any five-minute period, trading stopped. Um, but was it enough? And so what um, my research partner Michael Kane and I did was we looked at 24 billion trades leading up to that flash crash to see if this action were more symbolic than substantive. I mean, with, with the, with the uh, underlying idea that this policy and any policy that's put in place, any sort of government regulation, must be data-driven. It can't just be opinion-driven. Uh, we found, we had some pretty interesting findings. I won't quite give it away here because I want people to attend the uh, conference. And well, by all means, come on out, and, and there's going to be lots of data and opinions on display at this conference uh, at Loose Hall on November 29th from 4 to 6 p.m. The market uh, is going up and down. Uh, come understand what's happening and what it means for you and for our society.